All right, we're live. Sure. All right. Uh, well, I guess we're going to kick this thing off. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. Um, we're a southeast chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, and uh, we wanted to talk to you tonight about what to do and how to determine uh, the next step if you shoot a deer and, and can't find it. So, um, I'll, some introductions here. I'm Josh Watts. Uh, I'm the chapter chair for the Southeast chapter. This is <clears throat> Jacob Thompson, and uh, he's one of our board members from Louisiana. And we got uh, over here, Mr. Cliff Schrader, and uh, he's got a resume about a mile long when it comes to tracking deer. And uh, so he's a uh, board member, judge, and handler for the United uh, Blood Trackers. He's board member and handler for Southern Blood Tracking. And he's also a handler for Louisiana Blood Trailing Network and Mississippi Blood Trailing Network. So he uh, he sees more deer tracks in a year than most people see in their whole lifetime. And uh, so we're going to talk about tonight, uh, you know, a few things about when you shoot a deer uh, and it runs off, what do you need to do? So how do you look at a shot site and figure out where the deers hit, um, how to how to pick up different clues and determine you know your best chance of recovering that deer. So, uh, Cliff, uh, if you want to, well, this this weekend will be real busy out in the woods. Thanksgiving weekend, and a lot of hunters will be there. One of the first things I always like to do when I'm going up to check my hit site after I've shot a deer, I'm playing back in my mind. What did this deer do? Did he jump up and mule kick? Did he fall down? Did he run off looking funny? Did he hunch up? Did he run fast and then slow down? All these little things kind of play into helping you figure out exactly where you hit the deer. And, uh, you know, you'll have deer that just fall over right there. And uh, that's not always a good thing. So uh, that's one of the first things we look for when we go up there. Josh? Yeah, same. um... So I guess, I guess, so now, now you've shot it and you've made a mental note of what the deer did. So the next step is uh, you're going to go up to the shot site and uh, kind of start picking up clues. So uh, there, there are several things you'll run across when you get to a shot site. You'll have, you'll have blood, hopefully. You might have hair. You might have pieces of bone. There's other things that could be there. So I guess let's let's start with blood. D different types of blood that you might see. Yeah. Um, what what do you what do you look for when you look at the the blood when you get there? When I'm going up and I'm looking at that blood, I may look to see what color is it. Is it red? Is it dark red? Is it pink? And I may look to see how much of it is. It just a few drops. Uh, is it a lot of blood all over? Say, man, this deer can't go far. Uh, I, I look at all of that. Uh, so, so like on, on the blood, I know everybody uh, likes to to look for the the blood with bubbles in it. They, oh man, this is this is long blood. So, what when you're looking at blood, what makes you think that it's long blood versus something else? When I, when I see lung blood, most of the time. It's not the bright red blood with bubbles in it, uh, but you'll see it's like a pink froth or foam, and the bubbles are real small in there, like a like number twelve shot or something. It's real small, foamy blood. Yeah. And uh, you'll also you can see some blood blown up on trees or something if if they're they're breathing or sneezing, trying to keep their airways open. Uh, and we go from there now. We know what the deer did when we shot, and now we're seeing some blood that matches or not matches. Uh, so I, I guess a lot of people, um, if they see any kind of bubbles in the blood, they, they automatically assume long blood. So um, can, can you tell us a little more about the yeah. different kinds of blood you might find that, that may be mistaken for that? Yeah, if, if you find a nice puddle of blood and it's got bubbles all in it, uh, and they're they're larger bubbles. They're usually about the size of number six shot. A lot of times, that's just indicating a a, a big bleed, uh, and it's not long because and the color is still red on it. It hadn't changed because it hadn't turned pink. And it's kind of like if you just had a hose pipe burned in the yard, it, it makes bubbles around it. And uh, so, 
it, it doesn't really help us a whole lot when we see that. But most of the time when you see that, there's a lot of blood coming out, too. So that, that's more indicating like a muscle hit or something yeah. like that. Uh, muscle hit. Now, would you have a lot of blood there at the shot site with the muscle hit, or is that something farther down the trail? <laughs> sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes no. I, yeah. But usually right around there, if we hit through a muscle and all, we're going to have something to tell us that we're going to have some blood on the ground right there. And uh, now, if if we don't have blood on the ground, it could be it could be several other things. Uh, sometimes deer are just not bleeding right there. I've seen shots with thirty five wheelings a little high in the chest and through and through, uh, but no blood anywhere around there. It wasn't until we were probably 40, 50 yards on the trail before we started finding blood. Uh, you, you have, uh, well, we can go into the different kind of hits. So. Yeah, I, I guess we can do that. We, we talked a little bit about, well, I'll I tell you what, what about liver blood? Let's, let's talk about that. Cause that's something that's pretty common. If you, if you hit a little bit further back than you, than you, intend yeah. to you might run into that so yeah the, the liver is kind of like right in the middle mm -hmm. and it's sitting right over the top of the stomach like covering about two-thirds of it uh, when you when you see liver blood you can see stuff from from just plain brown color gray brown all the way up to like dark red uh, looks like calf liver or, or chicken liver I mean a very dark color and uh yeah, and, and we handle this a little different too, uh, other than if we have this bright, bright red blood. So, um, I guess so. The next thing you you go up and, and you've got blood or no blood. So, yeah. So you you've you've looked at the shot site and everything around it to determine if you've got blood, what type you've got. Yeah. Um. So next step, some other things you might see like hair. So so what are you looking for uh, if you've got hair on the shot site? Usually, just about all the, the shot sites will have some hair, even if you don't see it. It might not be right here where you hit the deer. It might be eight, ten feet behind or so where it blew this hair off. Sometimes you shoot it, you can see the hair fly off in your scope and all. Uh, I have a little chart that I carry with me, and I can pick up this hair and identify where it came from off the deer. And every year I usually make some, you know, just off the first deer I killed. I'll put shoulder hair, uh, leg hair, belly hair, back hair, brisket hair, uh, and I always have a reference. And if you just take one hair and put it there, you can say, well, this is not, not chest hair. And I'll, because they have different color tips and all on them. And I, it's, it's easier for me to go, okay, that one matches that. Then to just try to remember what it is. Uh, if we have hair there, that's going to help us. It's not always foolproof because it could go through chest and hit a leg or, or right. go through leg and hit belly. And it could, it could try to trick you with, uh, with different hairs there. Uh, a friend of mine had a bunch of real long white hairs at the hit site and found out later on they had shot the tail. Oh, so, man. Yeah. So, you don't see that some very tricky, often. Some tricky stuff. <laughs> That's pretty tough to hit the tail. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, what what else might you find at a shot site that's not hair, not blood? So what are a few things we should look for there too? Now, usually predominantly when people tell you that deer ran off looking funny or or something was wrong with them or, or I heard a big crack when it hit them, stuff like that, a lot of times you'll go down there, you'll find some leg bone down there. And it will be just little pieces of bone, sometimes just little crumbs of it usually on the trail you'll find more and more of them and you can take that bone and put it in your hand and if it's curved you know the, the concave side okay. uh you know that's where the marrow and all runs down and uh sometimes people will see pieces of bone and they'll say oh that's that's real bone and all it's most of the time it's it, if it doesn't have teeth in it it's going to be leg bone and uh you know, I've seen one time in, in literally hundreds of deer uh, where it was real bone. Mm. So not to say I didn't miss any, but most of the time it's not. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll find leg bone. Uh,
to have somebody like, well, you watching the live feed on your phone? Yeah, I saw yeah. some seen comments like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, when did it die? All right, we're, uh, right after we made introduction. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've been going in. <laughs> Will we back on? All right, we're, we're back. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened with that. Uh, we went dead there for a minute. Um, in fact, let me go back here and kind of get an idea of where we went dead. All right, we're talking about leg bones. All right, so we'll we'll start back over leg bones and we'll uh, we'll monitor the video feed a little bit closer. <laughs> uh, so so yeah, uh, we'll we'll back up. We uh, we missed a little bit there. So uh, Cliff had mentioned about leg bones, um, finding bone within the track, and basically, if you find bone, it's most likely going to be leg. Um, a lot of people will think that they've got pieces of rib or, or anything else, and uh, you probably don't. It's probably, if you've got bone, it's most likely going to be leg. He had also mentioned about uh, other things you might find, uh, teeth or or pieces of bone with teeth attached is usually the only other type of bone you'll find, which, which indicates, uh, you know, a, a headshot going wrong, caught the deer in the jaw or something along those lines. So, um, so we, we got past that, and then uh, we'll, we'll pick back up the next step that we were talking about was uh, different things other than other than that. Uh, so let's see what else we mentioned. We mentioned uh, brisket. So that was one thing. So yep. yeah, we'll we'll back up to there and start over. Some, sometimes we'll find a deer that's been shot in a brisket. You'll find this. There'll be little pieces of fatty meat blown out over there. There'll be a a lot of brisket hair. Uh, sometimes a whole lot. If, like if the bullet just barely grazes underneath the skin, it'll blow out a handful of hair, double handful of hair. Look, be all over. Briskets bleed a whole lot, but he's not going to die from just a brisket shot up. But I mean, it's, sometimes it's mistaken for lung when you get there. It's, man, look at all this lung on the ground, and up, uh, and you could tell the difference because with that brisket, you're going to have that bright red blood all over. With your lung, you're going to have that pinkish froth uh, I, I, I had to pull it up on my phone just to make sure we don't lose again i'll keep an eye on it over here all right um i think one of the last things you was talking about when we cut out and something i kind of wanted more too um visual indications of how the deer reacts to certain shots yeah um you kind of explain a gut shot hit and how that deer may run off you may see them um is there any other shots that you could tell you've had numerous examples of, of, you know, I shot the deer and the deer looked like this and how it may have, what kind of shot that was. Yeah. In the front end, when they're shot in the front end, they can have all kinds of different reactions. Sometimes they run off the tail up, tail down. Uh, Sometimes they kick like mules. Uh, Sometimes they don't show any reaction. And, and I've seen deer shot with a, with an arrow and go straight through him a stick in the ground and <laughs> he didn't even know he was hit. Yeah. Uh, but behind the punch back, it, it's a different matter. You usually know that one right off. And I don't know if that went out. So we're going to cover it again. Yeah, let's cover it again. I, I don't think we got that okay. after we were talking about that. So, and we're trying to decide whether we should go try to pick this deer up right now, or do we need to give it a little time? The old school was, always oh you let it wait for a couple of hours and all before you go track a deer uh we don't believe that now we believe legs and from the diaphragm forward we want to get on this deer as as soon as possible uh now from the diaphragm back uh if this deer is shot in the gut usually you see his reaction they'll they'll hump up or they'll they'll take off a couple of real jumps fast like Nothing's wrong, or like it was a lung hit, and then they'll slow back down and, and walk off. Uh, any kind of, or, or they'll just walk off real slow. I've had people shoot the same deer twice with their bows while they were walking off, and they hit them both time in the guts too. Oh no! <laughs> and uh, so you know, you know, this deer right here, this deer is a very recoverable deer if we act right, and uh. Typically, a deer that's shot from the punch back, uh, 
well, from diaphragm back somewhere in the guts. He's he's not feeling good. He's going to go out there 100 yards, 150 yards, somewhere in there. He's going to lay down. And if he lays there, uh, he's going to go septic and die. Uh, with a rifle, one to three hours, he'll go septic and die. And if you walk up on this deer after three hours, even if he's not dead, he's usually too weak to get up and, and get away. With your archery, uh, seven hours is about my minimum number of overnight if you can let him lay overnight uh people worry about oh this deer won't be good well this deer is not dead right now yeah let this deer lay there you can walk right up to him in the morning especially if you have a dog that's a high high recovery rate on a dog it's an easy track for a dog even though the guts are plugging up the hole and it's not putting any blood out on the ground yeah. um so i I guess let's let's talk about uh, maybe a different scenario. So, say say uh, you've got a you're shooting archery equipment. So let's, let's say we're in bow season. Uh, somebody shoots one. Uh, they they feel like it's a good hit. They they hear that thump that everybody's looking for. Yeah. Um, they get down and say they've got uh, good blood. Uh, but they have a little bit of, of white hair uh, on the arrow and not, not a lot of blood on the arrow. Maybe like, uh, maybe like a little bit of looks like kind of slime or, or a clear film or something. Yeah. So, so what do you think? Like if somebody finds something like that, that's something that I've seen before. Yeah. So, so indications from that shot, what, what are you thinking when you walk up and see that scenario? I, I personally went through this scenario this year. Uh, I shot a deer right there. Thought I hit perfect. And all I expected, uh, you know, it, it was two jumps and the deer was gone. So you didn't get to see any reaction. Right. I expected to find blood all over the ground. When I got down, I had very little blood on the ground. My arrow had just slime on it. I smelled the flesh in a straight gut. I can't track this deer. So got out the woods, went back the next morning. Deer was dead in his first bed. Yeah. And I'm 100, 150 yards away. Never found blood till the bed. Yeah. So that's so. that's something that a lot of a lot of people archery hunting do encounter. And I, I've seen it more than I'd like to admit. So yep. you know, that's a pretty common one. You you get blood right there, but not a lot past the shot site. White hair typically indicates a low exit. Yeah, and it could it could indicate a low entry, depending on you know how high up you were and, or whatever. So, Absolutely. and then that, that little film that's that's a giveaway. Oh, and and sometimes it's it's a film or a greenish slime. Most right. of the time, you can smell your air and smell that you could tell it's a pungent odor. And yeah. you say, oh, I gone through the gut. Even if I knew I had a good entrance, mm -hmm. which I I thought I had. I had a bad exit. You're not going to find that blood on the ground. And if you know you got bad exit, don't even push it. Um, so let's let's talk about a different scenario. Um, and this is something I, I guess this one would actually apply to to a gun as, as well as archery. Um, more more so archery, I think. So uh, you you shoot, and uh, the deer kind of almost acts like it's not hit, eases off. Uh, or, or runs a little while, stops, kind of looks around like it's not sure what's going on. Mm -hmm. And just, just you don't have time for follow-up shot or he's too far for follow-up or whatever. Uh, you get down, you find your arrow solid, covered in blood, and, it, and it's a darker blood. So, so what, are you, what are you thinking in, in that situation? Anytime, anytime uh, we see a darker blood, you know, I'm, I'm thinking more liver uh, and a lot of times you'll get a lot of blood. That whole arrow will be coated with blood. Uh, it will be the darkest blood. You know, liver's back is part of the guts. <clears throat> this deer, give it a chance to go lay down and die. Sometimes with, with these liver hits, hits where it's just a nick or so, you might track that deer. And especially if you're tracking on lead, you might track this deer and you get the deer up. Well, you know, stop. We're going to back out. We'll come, come back right. in a couple hours. And sometimes if, if they're way back in the gut, 
you might have to track this deer three or four times before yeah. he he goes septic. So on on a liver shot, um, on the track itself, are you are you typically finding blood pretty consistent, or or does it vary for you it, from what you see? It seen? varies because when when you pass through on this, you'll have most of the time some some guts come out and plug up the hole, and I. You know, it just doesn't let any of this drain out. And sometimes I find a lot of time we're going up a hill or down a hill, you'll find some blood either going up or going down as, as these guts move. You can also have an arrow shot deer that's bleeding real good and they jump or they go up and down and they move their the intestines on the inside, yeah, clogs holes. up these holes. Okay. So when you see that that darker color blood, are you still going back to your your gut shot time frame of one to three hours for a gun and seven plus for a bow? Yeah, and and always remember these are just general things. I know right now I'm not tracking it right now, and uh, you know because sometimes after three hours it's not gone. Sometimes it went and died real quick. Uh, you can go too too early though, and it's it's not good. Um, you, it's hard to go too late. Yeah. It's a lot easier to walk up yeah, on, it's, on it's the dead It's still going to be dead, dead when you get there. Yeah. But if you go too early, there's a chance it might still be alive. Yeah. Um, w one thing uh, is that we that I forgot to ask you earlier, um, if you shoot, and this is going back to archery, and I guess you you could run across it on a uh, on a gunshot as well. Mo most likely archery. If you find like a waxy type fat on your arrow, where, where are you most likely to find that from, from your experience? I, when, I, when I see that wax and sometimes it's got pieces of meat stuck in the broadhead too, I'm usually thinking brisket. brisket. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's bad whenever you have meat in your broadhead or your blades are broken off, you know, well, what happened there? Right. Uh, a lot of times we, we shoot 3D in the off season as hunters. We love to stick that pin right behind on that shoulder. Yeah. And if we shoot and hit anywhere on that seven bone, the way it's built, a lot of times you won't get deep penetration. Yeah. yeah. And typically that deer is going to shear that arrow, his first stride off. So you'll have your arrow and you're trying to figure out, man, do I have three inches? Do I have four inches? Do I have seven inches of right. penetration? Uh, easy. Just go, go back in the rib, stay away from the shoulder. Um, yeah, and that that's that's a good point to bring up. You know, there's a a lot of people shoot for that heart shot, mm -hmm. and I mean that's that's the ideal shot. But you're leaving yourself a very small margin of error there. Mm -hmm. And and from what I've seen and and people I've talked to, I know you probably had the same experience. If you back off that shoulder a little bit, well, if you if you happen to pull your shot forward, well, then you're still in the heart. Yeah. If you pull back. You're, you're still in the lung. I mean, it's, yep. it's, it's, yep. a, you've got a bigger margin of error than you think if, if you pull off that shoulder a little bit. So, yep. um, I, I got another scenario for you. Uh, gun season just kicked off down here and, uh, we got a couple of questions coming in too. So we'll, we'll get those in a minute. Um, yeah. And let me mention this. So if y'all, if y'all have some questions, throw them up here. We're going to go over a couple of things and then I'll start looking at some questions. So, uh, you know, if you got some, put them up in the comments, and I'll scroll back through in a little bit. Um, gun season just kicked off in Mississippi uh, a few days ago. Um, I think y'all got it going on down here in Louisiana, and and yeah. basically all, all the southeast is is in gun season right now. Um, this is a classic one that that I've seen several times. I know you've run across it. You shoot a deer out like a light. He hits the ground, man. He's dead right there. Uh, you. you high five you celebrate you you start packing your stuff up and you see his tail start twitching and his, and his legs start kicking and, and he gets his front feet under him and then he he walks off what what are you thinking in that scenario man it that's pretty much what we call a classic back whack this deer the way his spine's built he's got spinal processes that come out above the spine especially through the neck area not all over the back his backbone's not till it about that deep underneath his back. And if you hit one of these bones coming out, like think of a stegosaurus with all yeah. this stuff. If you hit one of those, it's uh, it's kind of like you hit your funny bone real hard. 
gives them a stinger. You hit your funny bone real hard, you know, you can't even use your arm for a couple yeah. of seconds. And I, that deer will dump right. So this is the thing we get a discount for next right, time. We're, we're, we're back again. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, uh, Cliff was talking about the uh, the spinal process sticking up uh, and and what happens when you when you clip one of those but don't get uh, anything vital. Yeah. So Yeah. If, if you hit them on top of the spine, you usually find a pretty good bit of hair there because it, it going through just a little piece of the deer hitting that spinal process or just going real close to the backbone enough to interrupt his uh, nervous function for a minute or two or five minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, you know, and you see it happen. Trackers get called for this every year. You know, the deer dumps in his track. Anytime when I'm going through giving my question and uh, we'll, we'll show yeah, you all we'll this in a this, second. Yeah. And when I'm talking to a hunter, I always ask me if he told me the deer hit the ground. I said, well, did all his legs lock up? And if, yeah, all his legs locked up. He hit the ground. He was dead right there. If he hits on top of the spine, lots of hair, a little bit of blood. If he hit underneath the spine, but still not in the vitals, lots of blood, uh, not a, not near as much hair. And and this deer, this deer's gonna gonna recover. He's gonna be back there again. So if he that happens to any of y'all get another gun of another bullet in the gun and watch them close. Yeah. And that, and that's, that's something that, uh, you know, if it hits the ground, man, keep, keep the gun on. And if it, oh, if yeah. it kicks, put in a, it is worth that extra one extra shot. Yeah. Then, 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 then watching oh. it walk off. Oh, this, I mean, we get horror stories about it every year. Uh, during rut, the, the two things that we get a lot of calls on, are going to be brisket shot because you're shooting at running deer. Mm -hmm. Usually it's a deer that's running that you're excited about anyway. Right. And they'll lead it a little bit too much and hit through the brisket or they'll hit somewhere along the spine and drop. Them. And if he gets up from that, he's going to make it. He's getting out of there. Yeah. Um, let me see if we had any questions pop up. And then, uh, then I wanted to get with you about your, your uh, form here. Let's see. Let's see. Um, all right, so we got one fellow here asked, uh, Robert asked, uh, what do you do if you get to the deer too early and it's still alive? So, so say you, you, uh, go in there, jump it up. What, what's your next step if, if you're tracking that? All right. Well, it depends on what led up to this. Now, if he's shot, if he's got a leg blown out or something on the front end, something that we should be tracking right then and there's no point in waiting. Uh, if he jumps up and all, I have a dog. I know I'm getting a dog on it. And uh, and, and that's something that we need to tell everybody about, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll cover that. We'll, we'll cover that here in just a minute for yeah. sure. But that's something we need to let everybody know that is an option. But sure. I, I generally want to push that deer. I don't want to give him a chance if it's a leg to, to clot up. I, I don't want, if it's one lung, I don't want to give him a chance to, uh, to stop the bleeding or anything like that. I want to push that deer. If it's in the back and he jumps up, it's time for me to back out, take a break. So I guess leading up to it, uh, depending on what your shot site tells you, mm -hmm. then you, you de it determines your action from that. Point. And, yeah. And, and I know it's, it's so hard not to go down this trail if I see some blood down that trail. So, well, maybe I can just go up there. Believe me, it's it's very difficult, but lots of people have done it, and they get that deer out that bed. And, uh, you know, it's especially for, for a tracker. We see it all the time. It's still difficult for us. Uh, man, there's blood there. I'm going back. I'm coming back. And But it, it's worth doing that. So, um like, like Cliff mentioned, um, he uses a dog to recover deer. Um, I do the same thing. And there's there's several options for people. So 
what, what we're talking about tonight is, uh, you know, you're analyzing the shot site and you're going to determine, can I find this deer? Uh, and then from that point, you, you can, you can say, well, do I need to get some help finding this deer? And, and that's, that's something that we definitely need to mention. So those are options. There's options out there. Uh, mentioned earlier, and I'm going to, uh, I've got links in the description for this video. So y'all scroll down and you'll see it. Um, Cliff was with United Blood Tracker. So national organization, uh, they've got a map on their website. You can find a tracker in your state or any state you're in. They'll have a list of them. Um, they, they go through what uh, different certifications levels yeah. and, and man, they're, they're top notch. Uh, they're, they're all certified and, and willing to help. Um, I've got a link to that in the description. Uh, Cliff is also a member of Southern Blood Trackers, which is a regional down here, in Louisiana, Mississippi. Uh, same thing, man. They've got all proven dogs. Um, and they're, you know, I, we're, we're pulling Cliff away from, from running tracks and I guarantee you he's itching <laughs> to get that, uh, that little dachshund out and go. Uh, and then, uh, I mentioned Louisiana blood trailer network and Mississippi blood trailer network. So these are Facebook based groups. Um, they have handlers throughout the States. Uh, so if you shoot a deer and need, need help recovering it, you go on that, that Facebook group and I've linked them in the description. And you say, hey, I shot a deer uh, in this county, this town, this is my phone number. And the administrators in those groups will will contact you, get a little more detail about the, the shot, uh, you know, any anything you can tell us about the track. And then we'll match you up with somebody in your county that can come help you. Um, and that so those, those are different uh, resources that are available. Uh, there's something similar, uh, and, and you'll have to search them on Facebook because I didn't link them in the description, but Alabama Blood Trailer Network, Tennessee Blood Trailer Network, Arkansas Blood Trailer Network, Georgia, and Florida. They all have the same uh, same type setup. So some of them you'll get on there, and they'll just have a list of people in your state. You grab a phone number and call them, and, uh, and, and they'll come out and help you. So there's different ways they're set up, so th there's definitely an option. Yeah. Um, and that leads us to something else. So, uh, like I mentioned, we're going to, if, if you request somebody to come help you find a deer, whoever you talk to is going to ask you a set of questions. And, and what they're doing is uh, they're trying to determine before they come out there, what, what do I need to be pre prepared for, basically? Um, yeah. Should I come out there right now? Should I wait till tomorrow? Yeah. So, uh, and, and Cliff has brought one of his surveys out here to, to give you an idea of what he's going to be asking, uh, if he talks to somebody and this can be used, uh, not necessarily just for, uh, you know, using a dog to recover. This yeah. is something that comes in handy for anybody that you could, uh, you could look at this sheet and kind of answer these questions and, and it'll help you determine a few things too. So I've, I've got it here and I'm going to, uh, I'll read over it, but I'm also going to uh, do a scan of this and, uh, and, mm -hmm. and upload it. So I'll, I'll get a link to that once I get home and get all this uploaded. So here's, here's a few things that, that Cliff is asking the people here. So uh, first is, is basic personal information, name, phone number, date, time, you know, contact information, basically. Uh, but then we get into the stuff that, that has to do with the deer itself, with the shot itself. So what did you shoot it with? Uh, was it a buck or a doe? Did you shoot it from the ground or a stand? And if you shot it from a stand, what's the height you were at and what's the distance? Now, those might seem pretty, uh, you know, just minute details. Yeah. But, man, that will tell you a lot. I mean, yeah. uh, the shot angle, uh, where, your, where your arrow exits will, will determine where the blood is. I yeah. mean, there, there's a lot of things there. Um, did you see the shot hit the deer? Uh, was it broadside quartering away, quartering toward, um, uh, did you get a pass through? Did you find your arrow and then the arrow itself? So, uh, did you have any sign on the arrow? Do you have blood? Does it smell gut matter? Mm -hmm. Uh, Put, you mentioned uh, earlier meat. Yeah. You know, that's, that's something that you can oh, find. Oh yeah. You'll, you'll find that on the, on the leg shots and briskets. You'll have meat stuck right in your broadhead. Yeah. Um, 
how, how far from the top down or bottom up on the deer so so you're did you did you shoot him in the spine the the bottom of the gut or somewhere in between um and then how far back from the the back edge of the front leg so it gives you mm -hmm. you're basically by that you're trying to determine what vital organ got hit yeah yeah uh, and and he's got and i'll and i'll put this up but he's got an illustration of a deer on here it shows you what basically what you're going to hit based on where you hit yeah um and, and that helps us figure out in states where we can run off lead do we need a a, a dog that can get this deer that's got a broke leg do we do we need a dog that can bathe this dog or up the deer or catch it but if you tell me i got that but i'm right by the side of the interstate or a busy highway yeah and we're saying i'm sending somebody that runs their dog on the lead right. where where they won't get out in the road um yeah and that's that's definitely something that you know sometimes a dog on a leash comes in very handy for a yeah. uh you know, close to a road or something like that for sure. A um, uh, few other things that that really help out is uh, how long did you let it lay before you went to look for it? Yeah. So sometimes, uh, you know, if and I and I've seen this and I know you've seen it a ton. You go to your arrow, you got blood, you got a little gut, and you're like, man, this deer might be dead right here. And and you and you you walk yeah. about thirty yards and you jump it. Yeah. So, so that's uh, how long did you wait? How many people have helped you track? Uh, describe the trail. Did, how far? Yeah. You tell. Uh, is it's it a lot of blood, or it's just single drops, or it drops all with the fingers going this way? We know the deer was running this way. Uh, it smears of, of stuff on the leaf. We found a bed. You know. So be a variety of things. Um, and there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of other ones uh, on here that that are pretty good too. So why did you quit trailing, and what did you do when you ran out of sign? Did you did you grid search? Did you did you work a circle? Did you just back out? So those are different things, and these come in pretty handy uh, when you're tracking with a dog. But this stuff also comes in handy if you decide to back out and go back in the daylight. Yep. Uh, so if if you if if you're walking and you run out of sign and you start grid searching well, you might step in a little bit of blood that you're going to yeah. spread somewhere else and throw yourself off with a dog that throws a scent all over the woods but it's also man if, if you're walking through you could be doing the same thing so. yeah pretty much anytime you go out with a dog when you get to the point of loss it's been searched and people not real careful about if they step in blood or not right. so the dog has to take a little time to pick its way through this before you can get on the virgin trail. Then they, yeah. they finish it up easy then. Uh, let me see. I think I saw a couple more questions come in. Let me see. Um, uh, let's see. One, one thing that really helps us a lot is if you're close to a property line, you get permission from the neighbors yes. to go on there in, in case we have to. At nighttime, sometimes it's, it's hard to get in contact with them. I, it, it helps us a lot because we can't cross that property line knowing that we're crossing a property line. So we got a good one here. Uh, should I take my wife shit zoo out on the site and let her have a shot at finding <laughs> it before I call the professionals? If he's been training it, uh, those shit zoos could be a tracking machine. But if you've never trained it and all, you probably don't want to go live trying on, on the first thing. You know, let's work a little bit in the off season and you'll be able to know, man, it's a tracking shih tzu. Yeah. Well, and, and something else about that tracking shih tzu, if they put the tracking shih tzu on it, let you know about it up front. <laughs> yeah. And and some dogs really have problems uh, uh, picking up where other dogs let off. Some dogs, they don't care. Uh, if you have a good dog, you're going to end up going behind people with dogs that a handler knows that sometime their dog could have an off day if he recognizes that he'll probably call somebody else in say, look and something's not right i don't know if, if roscoe's nose is clogged up or he got allergies or what but he hadn't done this up you know i've had friends call said man i know enough to know this deer's dead because we got guts he said but we can't finish this track so you know if you have an experienced dog you're going to go behind other people and you're not going to do it to say, 
oh, my dog did better than yours right. and all, because we're all on the same team here. But yeah. when you can go there, and especially if you have young trackers and stuff, if they do something a little bit off, you can show them and let their dog finish out the trail. I mean, you've got somebody that's going to track with you for a long time. And, and everybody benefits from that. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. So we got another one. Is, is there a charge for tracking or is there a protocol for gratuity? And then what's appropriate, what's expected? Well, only way I know how to, some people charge, some people don't. When you talk to these people, ask them, is there a charge? Some people charge by mileage. Some people don't charge at all. Uh, <laughs> back again we uh this thing's got a 15 minute timer obviously so uh anyway um we're back for for one more round uh so anyway uh cliff had brought it up so i i think what we dropped off uh we had just started andrew's question about uh you know is there a charge gratuities and all that so we'll we'll back up to that and start it over i don't know how much of that we caught so we'll uh, yeah we'll start back on that and, and it's some people charge, some people don't. Uh, they the easiest thing to do is ask a guy, "Hey, how much? Uh, how much for you to come out and do this?" Lots of people would do it for nothing, or they'll do it for just their gas money covered. Uh, most trackers I know really want to help, even you know if they can break even, it is fortunate. Uh, have that conversation where where you don't have a guy that shows up there and. Uh, you know, you owe me 50 bucks, you know, have that conversation. It's real easy. Uh, but, and I don't know how else to say it. You, uh, you get up, you get up in the Northern States, just about every tracker charges. They charge up uh, some very nice fees out in <laughs> Texas. They charge some nice fees. Uh, uh, you get up in rut in Missouri and Illinois and Iowa and all it's, $250 for a guy to consider coming out because they have so many calls coming in. We're very fortunate in the South. We have a lot of people tracking and, uh, and they want to help you out. All right. Um, let's see. I don't see any new questions on here yet. Uh, so if y'all got any more questions, throw them up here and we'll, we'll definitely answer them. Um, you got anything you want to, um, nothing offhand Not that, you know, Cliff already hasn't covered. I talk too much. That's what no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, the fact that I don't have a question means you covered everything you covered I up. think of. Well, uh, um, you know, I, I think uh, we, we we owe it. We owe it to the deer. We owe it to the animal to, to do everything we can to recover it. So um, I, I just hope people, you know, watch this and, and pay attention to it. Yeah. You know, kind of kind of use it to, to determine what should be done, you know, the next step. So, uh, um Let's see. Uh, I do have a, one question. Um, within these tracking groups, I know a lot of people probably have young dogs, just in any other case. Mm -hmm. Is it ever worthwhile, let's say you get a shot, regardless if you know if it's good or bad, just to extend an offer if anybody wants to come get the dog out for practice, or do they get enough all tracks that it doesn't matter? No, or, it, there's always people looking and saying, I know I hit this, this yeah. deer good. If somebody has a dog they want to run, yeah. you know, and that starts a very good relationship because when you're trying to train that dog, you've done all your practice lines, you've worked several months on it and all, but there's no substitute for that experience in the field. Yeah. So you tell all your partners, man, you shoot one, even if you see them fall 50, 60 yards, call me. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's, that's real helpful for the dogs. Get some time on the trail. Um, Let's see. I don't have anything new on there yet. Uh, not a question. Just want to throw this out there. Remember, uh, always remember your dog and the hunter's safety is number one. Man, that's a that's a dang good thing to bring up. Um, from a from a hunter standpoint and from a handler standpoint, yeah. that's something definitely good to keep in mind. I know, uh, you know, if if you're tracking with a dog, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and that's definitely if you have somebody come out there to to track a deer for you. I, I know mm -hmm. me personally, 
if I'm tracking a deer for somebody, I'm the only one with a gun. The same way here. Yeah. Um, I, I know that if they had been a good enough shot for me to trust them in the woods with a gun, then I wouldn't be there to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if they see their deer get up in front of your dog, they, they're wanting the They're deer. so excited, right. you know. Uh, and, and we've, unfortunately, we've had some, some handlers and all that's been injured and are killed. Yeah. Um, all right, we got one that popped up. Uh, do you find smaller caliber rifles lead to more track situations? Uh, some folks love 243s. Others say it leads to more wounded deer. So as many as you see, what do, what do you think on that? Well, as a tracker, I hate 35 wheelings. I, I hate 300 mags because we, we hardly ever get tracks off of those. Everything else we, we can get tracks off of. And, and, and you'll get a couple off of those, but it's a big, powerful bullet. If you hit something with it, uh, usually there's no tracking involved. <laughs> yeah. So so the, the smaller ones keep you in business. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah uh, the smaller ones. Uh, and, and and kids and all, you know, we usually have them shooting a, a smaller caliber. 708 seems to be real popular, 243s uh, and, and stuff like that with that. If the shot placement isn't very well, very good, we might have a track off of it. Yeah. Um, got one popped up. Uh, how long is too long for deer to lay dead, especially in the heat and archery season in the south? All depends. Now, if you shoot that deer and it's it's gut shot, I mean, I want I want to let him lay overnight. You figure he's running a hundred degrees when you shot him, and he's going to run out there. He's usually not going to lay out in the sun. He's going to find yeah. something in the shade or something he can get under. He's going to lay it down. He might be seven, eight, nine hours before he even dies. Sometimes you'll find them the next morning. They're, they're still not stiff. Yeah. So overnight definitely won't help. I mean, definitely won't hurt matters. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, nothing else on there yet. Um, well, to go back to one of the questions talking about the safety, let's say you, you know, you made your shot, you call a dog out. Mm -hmm. um, and the conversation leading up to that, is there any other safety points that the hunter should make to the tracker before coming out? I always like when we're trying to figure out what team to send, mm -hmm. uh, knowing if there's busy highways and all, or, or anything out of the ordinary. Uh, some, some, Trackers want to know when there's a lot of hogs in that area, a yeah. lot of wild hog. Some of them want to know about coyotes, if you have an especially high population of coyotes. Uh, anything like that, you know, I, I tell them where he knows what he's dealing with. Some dogs, uh, coyotes don't bother at all. And uh, sometimes you get some that's had bad dealings with them and they're spooked by them. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that got brought up. So one more thing I wanted to ask you, and, and that just reminded me, um, and not necessarily just with tracking with a dog, but tracking in general, say say I've, I've shot one, I let it lay up, and, and I'm going back after it. Mm -hmm. um, how, how often do you see coyotes or hogs messing a track up? Yeah. Or... or, or I guess dispersing the blood, dispersing the sign, or, or moving the deer, or yeah. you know, is that something you run into? We we, ha we, we have run into it, and uh, but not a whole lot. Okay. Uh, we've we've had deer that my dog didn't stay right on the track. She range out one side, range out the other. And something's peculiar about this, and she went right to the deer, but the deer was covered up and all. Mm. So we know a bobcat or some kind of cat was covering up and was planning on coming back for this animal later. But she knew. Yeah. She just couldn't tell me. Yeah. And, I, and I've seen where coyotes are pretty close in front of us on a deer, and I'll, my dog will stop, and she'll start tracking real slow, like, hey, you still here? Yeah. yeah I got <laughs> Kind you, of confidence, you know? huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we had another one pop up. Do you allow children to accompany you on tracking jobs, any minimum age? No. I I some people's dogs don't like to work before a crowd or anything. And you, you have to know your dog. My dog, if we have 20 people behind it and all of them, they don't care. They're still tracking. It's time to track. And uh, they don't care if everybody's back there and 
I, I love it when we have a, especially somebody's first deer or something right. like that. We can have the whole family go there and recover this animal. Um, we have one more pop up, uh, and then we'll we'll start wrapping things up. So, what happens if the track goes across property lines? We got to have permission to go. Uh, I I don't want to go to jail for yeah. crossing that line, yeah. and and I've had instances where where the hunter said we had permission, but in fact we did not. And uh, the landowner talked with me pretty pretty sternly about that, <laughs> and uh, and I will probably never do that again. I mean, make sure I have permission. Yeah, and I, I know something that uh, a lot of us use. Uh, for hunting especially a lot of us that use public land uh on x maps yes yep. you got your property ownership right there and, and and i've run into it before where uh i've been on a track with somebody and i, I see a, a definite terrain break or something to indicate a, a property change yeah and i'll just pull it up on my phone and say hey do you know so and so and name the neighboring landowner and if they say no i'm gonna call my dog back because yeah. they might tell you you got permission but yeah. If they don't know the person, you probably don't have permission. So, and a, and a lot of a lot of people have on X maps, and that's again not just for tracking with a dog, man. I, yeah, you know, a lot of people you, you're hunting close to property lines. A lot of people are starting to hunt urban deer, city limits. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're working with a uh, you're working with a couple of acres. You got to know your neighbors. Mm -hmm. So that's something else. It's good to know. It, it, it makes to have good relationship That's definitely there. yeah having that relationship before you get out there too is not a bad idea <laughs> now onyx is an app that you can purchase and put on your yeah, phone i'll show you when we get off I, here i know it i just yeah. want to make oh, sure okay. they and and some people use a motion x but i don't think it has the detail no i don't think yeah. and uh and dog tracks but it won't tell you property, property lines yeah. uh oh man we've got two more pop-ups we'll just keep rolling until we run out uh what do you look for to know a deer is fully dead so you go up on one and and, and you're like, well, well, here's my deer. How do you know that it's that it's dead? Are you looking for it breathing? Are you it, looking it, for you know? You, of course, want to look for it breathing. You want to look for his eyes to be closed. And uh, <laughs> you know, if he's got his eyes closed and opens them up, looks at you, it's not a good sign. <laughs> uh, we had a had a deer that we recovered, and uh, man, the two guys was man, look at this deer, look at this deer, and and my partner said. That deer's not dead yet. He said, yes, it is. I checked his pulse. He said, well, he just looked at you. <laughs> so he put him down. He was not dead yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, that's, that's what I look at. I usually approach him pretty cautious. I don't I don't want to let my dog up there right. until uh, until I've know. checked a deer because deer with any strength left at all could, could hurt a dog. Um, so we got one more question here, and then uh, – I believe my camera's going to cut off, so I'm going to catch it one more time, and then we'll do like a little wrap-up. So uh, last question was, do you find it difficult to get permission to cross property lines when you're trapped? Sometimes. Sometime. Property lines are real, and and it will shut down a track quicker than anything. Yeah. And uh, especially like if you have to cross two or three property lines, because yeah. you might know this one, you might even know this one and that one, but the third one you might not know. And Sometimes if you're in the middle of the night, you yeah. know, you're not even going to attempt to find out. You'll either say, man, if you get permission, we'll come back out. Uh, um, and, and along the same lines, this is something that uh, that I've heard before, and, and I, I'm sure you've heard it. We'll just call the game warden. He'll come in here with us, and we can get the deer. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've never found that to be true. Yeah, I haven't either. <laughs> and uh, it, it might be true for some people – it's never worked for me. All right. Well, um, we're going, we're, we're right in an hour, man. That was a good talk. Um, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, all the different organizations we mentioned are in the description. Uh, there's links to everybody. Um, I've got these, uh, interview questions and I'll get those scanned and I'll put a link to those in the description as well. So once we get, uh, once I get all that done, I'll, I'll drop that in there. Um, wrapping up, man, you got anything you want to throw out there? No, if y'all end up thinking of something later on, say, man, we want to ask them about that. Y'all put the questions on there and, and 
we'll do whatever we can to respond. Okay, to yeah, them. yeah. If y'all want to put some questions in in the uh, in the comments here after the fact, uh, I'll give it a couple of days. We'll gather some questions up and, and get them answered on here, and uh, uh, you know, make sure we get everybody's questions answered to, to help make sure you recover your deer this year. Yeah. Um, you got anything, Jake? Um, well, speaking of deer this year, will y'all go after any other animals, uh, pigs or any other big game? I, I won't. You know, I track with dachshunds, mm-hmm. and when my dachshunds catch a, a big boar, they just tear them up too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people will track different animals. I have been called to track horses, cats, dogs, people, and this is true. Well, I know a few kangaroo. The woods, so. <laughs> Got called to track a kangaroo in Poplarville, Mississippi. I did what any good tracker do. You refer it to your friend that lives over there. <laughs> and she did track it, but they didn't recover. Uh, well, uh, I guess I guess wrapping up, man. I want to thank everybody for for tuning in. Uh, let me hit this button real quick because it's flashing at me. All right, I didn't make it in time to catch it, but all right, we're back, and I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, so, uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Um, like like Cliff said, drop some uh, questions in the comments. We'll do what we can to get them answered. Uh, check out United Blood Trackers. Check out Southern Blood Tracking, Louisiana Blood Trailer Network, Mississippi Blood Trailer Network, and any blood trailer network within your state. Um, those guys can help you out if you if you put all the pieces of the puzzle together on your own and uh, decide you need some backup. Don't be afraid to call, man. There's people out there that'll help you out, and I just hope that this uh, helps you kind of put those pieces together by determining your different sign, your your different uh, deer reactions, blood, hair, bone, you know, whatever you find there. I hope this helps you determine your next course of action and at least a more recovered deer this year. So. Uh, Really, uh, really appreciate y'all, and uh, y'all drop some questions down there. We'll get them answered, and uh, y'all have a good night. Thank you. Yes, thank you.